Hello, dear. Welcome to your exciting and inspiring program, Moments of Inspiration, brought to you by the Broadcast Network of the Anglican Diocese of Lagos, Mainland. Now, welcome you once again. My name is Adia Jawi. Michael, you can call me also Adi Mai. Now, I am your host for this program. Um, it's a very special week, you know, Holy Week, uh, which is also called the Passion Week. And but I will say happy Monday Thursday because Monday Thursday is um, a Thursday within the Holy Week, like we uh, we have we have now. And we I like to talk briefly on the you know Holy Week. Holy Week, also known as Passion Week, is the time from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, uh, which is the Resurrection Sunday. Also included within Passion or Holy Week are the Holy Monday, the Holy Tuesday, the Spy Wednesday, the Monday Thursday, the Good Friday, and the Holy Saturday. The Passion Week is so named because of the passion with which Jesus willingly went to the cross in order to pay for the sins of his people. The Passion Week is described in Matthew chapters 21 to 27, Mark chapters 11 uh, to 15, Luke chapters 19 to 23, and John chapter 12 to 19. Passion Week begins uh, with the triumphal entry on Pan Sunday on the back of a coat as prophesied in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. But our focus today is on the Mounted Thursday, which is within the Holy or the Passion Week. And let's talk also a, uh, about the Mounted Thursday. Mounted Thursday is uh, also known as the Holy Thursday. It is the Thursday of Passion or Holy Week, which is one day before Good Friday, uh, that is the Friday before Easter. The Mounted Thursday is the uh, is the name given to the day on which Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples, known as the Last Supper. Now, there are two important events that are focused, uh, that are the focus of Mounted Thursday. Number one, Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples and thereby uh, created the Last Supper that as we have today, today in the church, also called the Holy Communion, as we have this in Luke chapter 42, verses 19 and 14. Some Christian churches like Anglican Communion observe a special communion, you know, communion service on Thursday uh, in memory of Jesus, I mean, on Mount Thursday, in celebration of Jesus' last supper with his disciples. Second is um, that Jesus Christ washed the disciples' feet as an act of humility and service, thereby setting an example that we should love and serve one another in humility. And you'll find this in John 13, verse 3 to 17. Some Christian churches, however, observe a foot washing ceremony on Mount Thursday to commemorate Jesus' washing uh, the feet of the disciples. Here are also two inspiring hymns that I have for you to also enjoy, you know, this very feast of the church. The number one is, All my hope on God is founded. This hymn was written in the year 1680 by Joachim Nieder, who lived between 1650 and 1680. It was the author of the famous hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, and it was translated by uh, Robert Bridges. In 1899, poet Robert Bridges, who would later become England's poet laureate, translated the text. At the time, Bridges was choir master for the parish church of St. Peter and St. Paul in the village of Gatterdon, where he lived. Bridges, feeling disappointed in the range of hymns available at the turn of the century, published his own collection of 100 hymns, the, the Yattendon Hymn of 1899. Among them, 44 were written or translated by him, including All My Hope on God is Founded at number 69. This is a beautiful hymn for communion, framing our human frailty with trust in God's providence. The hymn touches lightly on the imagery of Genesis with God sustains his whole creation and the allusion to the feeding miracles and the petition of the lost prayer, that is, give us this day our daily bread. With the final phrase, he shall all his people feed. Please enjoy this hymn.
Welcome back. Don't forget that this program is brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Lagos Midland, as it's powered by the broadcast network of the diocese. The second hymn I'd like to give to you for your listening pleasure is Author of Life Divine. This hymn by John Wesley was first published in Hymns on the Lost Supper in the year 1745 in two six-line stanzas in section two as it is a sign and a means of grace. It was included in the second edition of Ancient and Modern, 1875, and has been included in many subsequent uh, Anglican hymn books, as well as those of Congregationalists uh, and the United Reformed Church and others. The church needs, needs hymns that delve into the mysteries of God's presence, especially in the sacrament. This hymn comforts these subjects deliberately and in as in as, as conscious a manner as was possible from Wesley. It leaves the singer with a direct approach to the element of Holy Communion with leaving enough space to respect their inherent mystery. Kindly listen and be inspired by this hymn, Author of Life Divine. Welcome back. This is uh, how far I can go today uh, in celebrating this uh, epic occasion of Monday Thursday with two inspiring hymns for you. My name is Adia Jai Michael, and I'll be coming again to bring further editions to you. And I'm very, very sure that you would like and you will enjoy and you will be blessed you know, by these programs. God bless you. Bye bye.